Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and the guy that wrote too many of these intros. You have been warned. This is Random Review. Before we begin, thank you very much to Cooking Steak with a Waffle Iron for joining the Patreon campaign. That is definitely a goofy one to to uh, to, re to read off, and I know where that came from. I know who did this. <laughs> it doesn't upset me nearly as much as it upsets Red Claw. But hey, I, I'm I really appreciate you pitching in. Thank you very much for doing so. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are almost through. Uh, we are halfway through all the reviews and my downtime, so yeah, let's move right on into the next one. Continuing with review catch-up, we have the newest Megatron on the block, which is actually uh, a 20-year-old Megatron, but he's back on the block now. You get my point. It's Armada Megatron. And because it's Armada, I feel like I am somehow duty-bound to review this thing, and I don't know what you expect of me. I'm sure you want me to talk about it, but I don't know if you want me to loathe it just because it's from Armada or not. But that is what reviewing is for. And that is, and I try to be as objective as I possibly can be. So I'm going to go into this with clean, fresh eyes. Thinking back to when I got this toy originally. And now seeing if I finally get what I wanted out of it today with Legacy. So, first off, size. This definitely feels like admittedly my hands were much smaller when i was when i first picked up armada megatron so when i feel this when i pick this guy up i'll tell you it definitely feels like it's the right size for the original toy like this i, I mean i took it out of the box and my brain immediately fired back to the original Armada Megatron toy in a way that really doesn't happen to me with a lot of modern recreated figures this really does just feel like a duplication of the original toy. Of course, with modern design sensibilities to it, but that's going to come later. I mean, offhand, yeah, it just feels like it's correct. So, he is the H-Tank, the traditional vehicle form for any Cybertronian Megatron from back in the day. We had a lot of H-Tanks during the mid-2000s. It was an interesting time, but... Here we go. We've got a brand new one today. He is cast in a dullish green plastic, which looks very, very nice, very accurate to the original Armada Megatron. You can see black plastic uh, peeking through on the sides, as well as making up the treads, as well as part of the barrel, and a little bit of gray plastic toward the rear. We're also going to see just little hits of purple here and there, but the color is mostly disguised in this mode, and we won't really see an impact until we get into its robot form. But, man, when we look at this, like, number one, I'll tell you, like, it does have heft to it. It is pretty solid, and it looks pretty. Just plain and simple looks pretty. This is lavishly decoed. Keep in mind, this is a modern leader class toy, but it does not come with any added accessories. Not, it doesn't have the big Hulk hands. It doesn't have any extra weapon pods. It is just a big chonky figure and he feels it and you can see in the paint budget where they got away with so much lots of silver decorating both sides of the vehicle very asymmetrical design and sculpting which i really like to see you can see hits of orange here on the sides on the barrel here at these gun barrels at the top you got a little bit of gun metal mixing in the black here on the side being painted these we look here on the side that, well, oh, that's that's molded plastic, but you see the gunmetal adding more color to it, a little bit more silver on the side. He's just loaded. Like, headlights even. Even painted the yellow on the headlights. Yellow visor up here, more headlights. Yeah, tons. Absolute tons of paint. And then you focus in on the inside of his vehicle mode. Which I'll angle the light so you can see. More orange being exposed. You can see those claws he doesn't clamp down like the original one does. I'll give you a warning about those horns once we get into robot mode. But yeah, that's like feature-wise, he's got a ton going on here. Uh, he does have fake wheels in the bottom, so he can roll a little bit if you want him to. 
uh, if you would like to start attaching things to him, like, oh, I don't know, smaller toys, uh, you have 5mm pegs on both sides here, one up here at the top, 5mm peg here in the cannon barrel, which also does come off, so you have that peg to work with too, if you really want it. And then plenty more here, two more here on the side, you got ones in the back, if you want to add blast effects, you know, for that you know, turbo power jet engine tank you've always wanted since you were a child. But yeah, works, looks really, really nice. Turret does go uh, not quite all the way around. It's because of the way it's engineered. It stops there, and you rotate it around, and it stops there. So you've got this, like, really weird, like... <laughs> you've got this, like, really weird gap of, like, you know, like 115 or so degrees where it can't reach oddly enough uh also this this component which i believe in the original could flip fo forward enough in order to point upward looks like an anti-air gun does not do that here it just has uh two points of uh two spots where it likes to detent like that so that's a little bit more limited and of course because he's not Minicon loaded, a lot of those tiny little weapon accessories that would flip out, a lot of those extra little panels that he would uh, emerge from when he had Minicons attached, uh, they are not included. So after that, after all of this, it's basically just your imagination. So that's the tank mode. The tank mode is pretty nice. So we get this guy into robot mode now, and I'll show you how he transforms. And this is where things still get a little bit familiar, but we are going to add some modern sensibility to the design so we're going to start by unclipping these panels from the underside and then the legs hinge down on the thighs just like so and yeah like this will feel very similar we'll clip those together close up the legs like so go ahead and ah very tight here hinge out the toes as well as the heel spurs all right, so that's nice and secure. That's pretty much done. Uh, we'll handle the rest of that in a heartbeat. So I'm gonna go ahead and hinge. Uh, well, we don't need we need no no need that yet. Uh, I am going to have to rotate the legs here. He's already starting to look very much like Megatron. So here's where we get into some of the weird new stuff. So this side piece, which covered up a gap in the uh, tank mode, is going to actually be the fulcrum point to get uh, the shoulders hinged down like so. They're going to fill out the chest. And then a second hinge is going to raise the shoulders into their appropriate locations. Once those are out like so, now we can fold the chest down. So instead of this little face covering panel sliding in like it used to, uh, Hasbro does in uh, try to avoid slider joints these days. So instead, the panel flips in. You're going to close the chest back up like so. Now we go to those gunmetal panels in order to flip the arms out like so. This, again, feels very much like the original toys engineering. All right. Close those up. Now, just have to get the hands flipped around this is kind of a tight hinge so you'll excuse me if i'm using uh the table for a little bit of extra leverage but yeah that's how that goes and that is how we get megatron into his full robot mode i will now have to adjust the camera because he's a big guy all right so like i said the transformation feels really familiar he does have a lot of elements retained from the armada design and that is, again, largely because the cartoon animation was fairly accurate to how the toy worked. So there's really nothing else you can do to kind of like twist it up or tweak it. You just kind of replicate the engineering and add articulation to it. Things like that, as well as adding some extra panels to cover up some gaps and removing the slider joint, also really shows like the advancements in engineering we've had since this toy was originally designed. So... You got a little bit more going on there, uh, but for, for the most part, it feels really familiar. It feels real familiar. All right. Speaking of familiar, let's take a look at that head sculpt here. Yeah, that that's our Emperor of Destruction right there. So yes, right down to the classic antler look 
He is Armada Megatron through and through. They did a really good job rendering the head, the head design and the helmet. Now, I will tell you, uh, excuse the darkness, uh, I will tell you that the horns themselves are flexible plastic. They are soft. So, uh, yeah, be careful with them a little bit because they can unpeg very easily. You can put, you can peg them right back in, but the fair warning, they're not glued. They're not, they're not, uh, pinned. They're not, uh, tabbed or anything. They're just kind of like loosely pegged in there. So the horns can fall out kind of easily if you're not paying attention. So just to make sure you have that advisement before you continue on with this toy. Now. Taking a look at him again, he is, again, carrying on what the vehicle mode did. So we can already see a ton more purple has been exposed, so it's a lot more gray. Uh, despite the fact that you still see so much of the tank around him, he's done a great job of hiding some of his primary colors. And I always love that visual transformation trick of making, like, the primary colors pop out from something that didn't seem like they were there before. So all that's good. Uh, we have some added paint details going on. The shoulders, of course, with the Decepticon emblems uh, tampographed on. The midsection has little dots of orange there in the top of the pelvis, as well as some solid steel abs, which I would expect no less of Megatron. Yeah, and little details like the black on the top of his feet stand out a little bit, too. I... My brain wanted to say that the black on the chest is not accurate, and I think that's because on the toy I remember it being a lighter shade. But looking at the cartoon, looking at the source material, no, that's absolutely correct. For some reason, my brain just interprets it weird, and I don't know why. Um, probably because the chest has uh, kind of removed that big purple switch that the mask would originally attach to. Should have had a tiny Decepticon symbol in it. It does not, of course. I think that makes up for it, don't you? So yeah, he does have a lot of familiarity to his look. He is so familiar in look, and they went so like accurate to how he was supposed to look. If you take a look, his right hand is your standard fist. The left hand is an open hand, just like the original toy was, because this is where, because he had that he had a minicon gimmick where like you slide it out and it made a knife flip up into his hand. Thus, his hand had like a claw look to it rather than uh, rather than a standard fist. It's actually a really neat detail, like completely pointless. They could have just made it like match the other side, but it does really bring out something a little bit different. It shows you how much they were paying attention. You can even see the forearms have different sculpting on them. Even the panels here on the chest are asymmetrical. So they put a lot of work into making sure all of the asymmetrical elements of him were retained, which is really, really nice. Now, if we want to play features, unfortunately, it doesn't come with any added accessory. This is actually a pretty rare leader toy these days that really doesn't have a third mode, nor does it have any big bulky accessory to kind of make up the price. He does feel really bulky, but he doesn't feel that much bigger than, say, Blitzwing. I feel like a lot of the budget ends up in his paint job. Um, because it could not go into anything else, like, say, blast effects for his cannons, or, oh, I don't know, a mini-con? You're telling me... Yeah, it, just, it frustrates me that even these larger size classes, they still say they can't budget in a simple mini-con. I don't want the gimmicks to work. I just want a little vehicle to plug onto all these 5mm ports across him. Doesn't that make sense? Ah, uh, well... So, uh, what can we do for play value? Well, let's demonstrate articulation first, because uh, once I demonstrate his main trick, he won't articulate much anymore. So, the head itself is a swivel, so you're limited to left and right motions. Uh, nothing really up and down is going to work for you. The shoulders are weird. The shoulders are weird. If I flip up the panel, that does give me all this access here. But his shoulders work more like the modern, like the new laser Optimus Prime, where the shoulder is mounted backward to the back panel here rather than to the side of his torso due to how the toy's transformation engineering works. He still has a full range, you know, but it does in motion feel really awkward. You know, like it works, but you can tell that it's not pivoting from the spot that it would normally pivot from. And that's throwing me off a little bit. That messes with my head just a little bit. 
Uh, also, I really wish this kind of pegged in a little bit more solidly so I don't accidentally like do this to his shoulders. Um, also, to a point, the shoulders do not move backwards, so you can't like run, or, you know, you can't like arc them back like the original toy. And because his arms are restricted to the backside, you cannot bring his arms any farther back than that. So they do come up kind of limited and awkward feeling, though they do fit most poses. You do have the waist articulation that works fine. Thighs all work. You have the full, you know, the hips are full universal. The thighs are full rotation, almost 90 degrees at the knee, and then full ankle tilt as well. So he's got plenty of range of motion below the waist. It's just those shoulders that are just kind of awkward, and that's kind of unfortunate. But he does have the articulation I wish this design always had, which is primarily in the legs. And that, you know, makes a world of difference to how, like, uh, the presentation for this toy actually works out. So that's enjoyable. That really works for me. All right, so we got one more trick that we can show off with this Megatron. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get his arms out of the way. I'm going to hinge this piece down. So it will stay out of the way while we rotate the entire midsection around. Close it back up. Aim that forward. Aim the smaller cannon forward. He's, and that's going to put Megatron into his familiar attack mode. Which normally would have a Minicon added to it to uh, add to this. But unfortunately, you know, budget thing again. But it is cool that they still engineer this in. He can actually do the trick. It doesn't rotate around all the way. Like I said, for some weird reason, it's not a full 360 on the turret. But, yeah, it actually does work. So you can actually arm up your Megatron this way. And this brings up the question. Do I, now that it is actually in hand, after all the speculation and multiple videos about the topic, do I think that Tidal Wave is actually going to come out and combine with this Megatron? And the answer, my friends, is no, uh, for two main reasons. Number one, while the arms are fairly stiff for their size class, um, there is no ratcheted element to them, which is what he would need in order to hold up what essentially would be a third of a leader class toy at minimum uh, in weight on each arm. Uh, when I can just like do this and just kind of move his arm without any effort whatsoever, uh, no, that's not going to hold up the kind of weight that Tidal Wave would require. Also, you'll notice that as part of the new transformation scheme, he does not have the slide joint in his torso, which is what was required for Tidal Wave to be able to clip onto his back. Now, you could say that, well, they'll pin that on as well, but keep in mind, that slide also gave it the extra height it needed to keep his big arm-mounted sections from scraping the ground all the time. So... While I have no doubt someone will third-party 3D print or something to make a tidal wave for this Megatron, I don't foresee Hasbro actually doing it. Much as, you know, people might want it after this toy's debut and after this is, you know, becomes much more readily available, the truth is it really just, uh, it really just doesn't seem like it's engineered to be able to handle it. So, is what it is. I think this is just going to be how this one is. At best... Expect a Galvatron repaint, but I don't think you're going to be getting anything else that attaches onto him. Minicon or Tidal Wave, either way. But that is going to be Armada Megatron. Yes, it is a very solid and lavishly painted leader class figure. He doesn't come with any of the extras we come to expect, which is disappointing because, well, it does rob play value when you don't even have something as simple as a knife or rifle accessory. You know, like... Like, maybe a little, like, uh, Requiem Blaster accessory would have been nice. Something. So, like, I don't know. He does feel lacking, as that's how I'm going to phrase him. That said, he is solidly constructed. Nothing is really hollowed out on him at all. You can see all the way around. He's just dead solid as a toy itself. Uh, and if that is valuable to you, you're going to get value out of this guy. He is pretty much what I wanted the original Armada Megatron to be. Highly articulated. Uh, and just very well painted and detailed. He just suffers from some weird design choices and just like a lack of things to do with him. But beyond that, yeah, he is not bad. Maybe wait for a sale, but overall, yeah, 
he, I'd say he makes for a decent upgrade of Megatron. I'm like, I think you guys got this. I will back away, and I will see you all later. You've got this handled. <laughs> Alafi's like, really? You're not gonna help me? Like, it's fine now. It's like, these disgusting <laughs> creatures breathing down my neck, and you're all just like, I believe in you, you got this. That all burn. right, you seem He's... to have this. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs>